Hey yo, it's Kingpin, and right now you're locked into Crash Williams and Lydia on UK Full Stop West Side. Done now. If you are just locking in, we are joined by someone who is definitely showing the essence of hip hop is well and truly alive. Yeah, and he's yo. been, we've been having so much fun in the studio this evening. It's Kingpin. What's going on, bro? Hey, what's good, man? It's been an absolute pleasure, man. I'm enjoying myself here today, man. I'm in my element. It's been good to have you, man. Thank you exactly. very, very much. Hover bubbers and all. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I found yeah, that picture, by the way, of the original. Yeah, yeah. Penny so, yeah. Farthing and, and Wax <laughs> Moustache or not, uh, weren't that bad. No, yeah. It wasn't, wasn't that long ago. Oh, okay, I'll let cool. you off now. But, yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. Awesome. Cool. So... For those who don't know, who need to know, yeah, yeah, who is Kingpin? I guess the best way I would kind of break myself down as if I put a tagline on it, I would say I'm kind of like a thinking man's rapper. Um, mm-hmm. I come in the vein of like, like the artists that kind of inspire me, the likes of KRS, Nas. So I'm kind of like of that. Okay. I love that golden age boom bap sound, um, and I like being. I'm very conscious of my environment, of the issues that are taking place in and around me. Um, and so I like to bring that into my music. So I, I kind of like see myself as a reflection of my upbringing and, and my environment. And my music kind of is a soundscape of that. So when you tune into me, it's kind of like you're brought into my London realm. You're brought into a lot of the issues that I'm facing and the dilemmas that I'm going through. And hopefully you can connect and, and feel that energy and, and relate to it. And in a way, you'll be able to find your own story and your own journey through through the lyricism and through the music that I'm bringing. And yeah. letting them know. And letting them know, <laughs> which is what I do. Yeah, yeah I do yeah, my yeah. best to let them know. And a lot of my music has, um, it carries with it an energy, you know, from whenever I'm writing a track, I'm kind of, I'll be going through a certain emotion at a certain time. Mm. And I like that to be, uh, to resonate through my music. So whatever energy I'm feeling at that time, I'm writing, I like to bring that. So I'll get the right beat that's reflective of my emotions at the time. Yeah. And put the right kind of lyrical content down. And from time you hear that tune, I kind of hope that I'm taking my listener into a point where they're like, they're feeling the same energy as I was feeling and they can kind of connect with it in that way. Yeah. Sick, sick. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've been talking a lot about, you know, greatest to the latest, Mm -hmm. you know, old school, new school. Yeah, yeah. So who was was Kingpin listening to, you know, back in the day that really inspired him to do what he's doing? Okay, so, like, it's kind of funny because, like... When you track your musical journey, it's kind of crazy how you get yourself on your path, and you'll think, oh, actually, it's one. There'll be one album that jumps out at you, but if you think that little bit deeper, you kind of realise, raw, actually, it stems from the smallest of seeds from beforehand. So early, early on in my musical journey, hmm. um, like, you know. My family used to know this DJ, yeah? yeah? And and he was kind of just throwing away, hand me down. He would get handed a lot of material. And some of the stuff that yeah. he didn't like, he would be like, yeah, yeah, like he's doing a favour. Hey, take this. Here's the here's the latest uh, CD. And, and one of them that I got was from a crew called um, Third Bass. And yeah. the album was called Derelicts of Dialect. And like, I was really, really young at the time. Um, I hadn't really got any grasp or understanding of hip hop, but I heard this and the sounds connected with me. The lyricism, I was like, whoa, these guys are spitting bars and it, it just it just drove me mad. So I would suggest to anyone, dig back, check out this, uh, this album. And it turns out the rapper on this, it was funny because when I did my research, the rapper on this album, MC Search, he was actually mm. the executive producer of one of my favorite albums of all time, Illmatic. Yeah. Okay. Which again, I will yeah, 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 yeah. put down as a big inspiration to me. So when you, it's crazy because I had a real deep connection with that album. It was like one of the first albums I listened to. Yeah. And I remember my family was like, yo, he's listening to some seriously hardcore hip hop yeah. right yeah. now for a young guy. But that was my journey into hip hop. Yeah. And when I look back now, the MC from that album was actually one of the guys that discovered and helped put Nas onto the platform that he was on. Sick. So a guy called MC Search. So yeah, 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 yeah. Um, third bass and the album was Daryl, it's a dialect. That was a big one for me. Mm. And then as I travel further down the journey and I, I was like heavily into Snoop Dogg, mm. like an Onyx crews like that. Onyx yeah, brought that yeah, ruggedness yeah. and I loved that. And so those were my early, they were the the kind of early inspirations into what I was doing. So is there any like, um, is there any like UK influences as well that Oh yeah, definitely, say. man. Like for me though, my first exposure, like when I started rapping, like I didn't even think UK guys were spitters. Were spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. I was I'm from th- th- them areas where I was like, I didn't realize that UK guys were spitting. Mm. And then I, I come across this DVD 
Um, it was like a dark and cold DVD. They still got it. It's, oh, a, it's a record yeah, yeah, shop yeah, called yeah, Dark yeah, and Cold, yeah, yeah. right? They used to and have clothing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a record yeah. and clothing store, right? And yeah. so they put out this promotional DVD, and on there there was a load of spitters, and it was the first time I seen these guys. And there was rappers like Fallacy, mm. um, like Reveal, um, uh, guys like Skinny Man, and uh, yeah. and this was the yeah. first like Rodney P. And I was like, whoa. This is UK heads rapping. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. And up to then, I thought the only thing UK people were entitled to do was like MC maybe over drum and bass, jungle and stuff like that. Because yeah. there was yeah. a junglist yeah. MCs and, 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 and yeah, and doing all that. Yeah. But to actually rap, nah, that's that's an American privilege, right? But then I saw these UK guys doing it and they were doing it sick. And that kind of put a lot of influence on me. Once I saw that Dark and Cold DVD, mm. I was like, yo, I'm going to elevate my style. Because at that time I was MCing. But I was like, yo, I want to do hip hop because I felt it had more space for me to to, 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 to talk about lyrical Super content with a narrative yeah. and with a story behind it and something with a bit more um, substance. Mm. So that was the beginning of me actually starting to rap myself. How you know did what you mean? find the place where you were most comfortable? Because, of course, all of those rappers have their own yeah, yeah. little, like, individual style. So mm -hmm. how did you find the one that you thought, OK, this is where I should sit? I think, really, if you're real to yourself, if you're true to yourself, it's not a case of searching for anything. It all comes from within. Yeah. So it's like, you know, forget looking at examples and looking for other people's voices. It's like tune into yourself, mm. you know. So I used to close my curtains, you know, put on the instrumentals and just, just let the pen... In fact, the way you write is your flow. Your yeah. first voice is what comes out on that piece of paper or on the laptop, what you start typing up. That's where your flow is generated so, so from. So what, what, what kind of, like, when, when you first touch the mic, like, mm -hmm. what... Yeah, what was that thing? What was that topic? Was it, you know, um, was it like political? Was it about yeah. a girl? Was it, what What was it? Can you can you remember? Mm, I think my first lyrics were just, to be honest, what I call bragger raps, you know? Okay, and it yeah, was just, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. me trying to stake my claim because I, I used to, I, I come up on an estate, yeah? Mm. And all, all the heads on my estate were older than me. Mm. So I was too shy to even start spitting in front of them. Yeah, yeah? yeah so yeah, yeah, I knew yeah. I could do it, but I didn't want to. And yeah. like my mate had a pair of 1210s, like the Technique decks, yeah, and yeah, he was yeah, spinning yeah, yeah. stuff. And one day he forced it on everyone. It was like a little house party he was having. He, and he went round in a circle and he went, <laughs> right, everyone's just going to drop some bars. Mm. Yeah, go on, just drop it. And it was like, no, no, everyone's yeah. acting shy. And so he just put everyone on the spot and it went round and I'm watching as it goes from left to right and it's mm. coming to me slowly. And my nerves were jangling. I'm thinking the man them are all going to take the mickey out of me. I'm going to be buried. Yeah. But you know what? It would be even worse worse if I don't say nothing because everyone stepped up yeah. even though everyone's having a giggle and a laugh I've just got to step up yeah. and I did it and I remember looking and no one was taking a mic everyone was like yo eyes wide what? open this you guy could. can yeah. do this and it was the first time the man them where I was always little T, the small one. But now I felt 10 foot tall. And the man them were looking at me like, yeah, this guy can do it. Yeah. And I realized this was a great place for me. This was a way of me earning respect amongst my circle. And so it just it just mm. gave me more incentive to carry on. And that was kind of the first time. But the first bars were just braggadacious stuff. Like, you know, I'm bad at this and I'm wicked at that. And I'm, hey, <laughs> how many girls can it, I get? Yeah. How many this? Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I know yeah, it's yeah, shameful, yeah, but yeah. that's what it started. Every, everyone kind of starts off like, and then I developed more of a social content. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? And I started thinking, being more conscious. I think it comes with maturity. And so the content started to have a little bit more mm. of a social, you know, had more of a point and a meaning to it. Yeah. Was there any truth in those brag raps? Or uh, yeah, I, oh, I believe I'm the best. <laughs> so yeah, at the time I was yeah, like, yeah, it's 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 100% true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to have that confidence. Even I know people might say like, fake mm -hmm. it till you make it. But mm -hmm. you have to have your own self-belief. I think I, th I would probably say like 90% of the best MCs like actually think they are mm. the best. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and yeah, I they think that's part to. of they the... Have to, yeah. I think as an as a MC, because it's so competitive, mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. have to believe that. That's why Grime is, uh, is alive right now. Oh, so many great characters in because, Grime. I love it. Yeah. I love it. And they push each other and the bar goes high because everyone's trying to be the best on it. But, yeah. and, it and it actually creates a, a, an, an element and a level where everyone's trying to raise the bar and this, yeah. this just creates for better lyricism. Exactly. If you actually look at the early days of Grime, it was actually just a lot of repetition. But yeah. now there's yeah, some yeah, yeah. seriously skilled lyricism that goes into it and I got mad props for that mm. and that's, I think that's because everybody's pushed each other to go higher mm. and and also in terms of like thinking you're the best well if you don't think you're the best who else is yeah. who else will 
you know so in to a degree i think most of the the the, the credible rappers that you kind of got respect for if you ask them personally and they were being real with you they probably say yeah i'm the best yeah yeah, you know? yeah and yeah, i think yeah, that's yeah. just part of the persona that drives you on to keep writing and, and keep working hard you know okay cool so obviously you know you you know you talk about like that the every the every man the stuff like the everyday stuff yeah, and, yeah, yeah. you know something that you know real people can relate to yeah you know, i've heard it referred to as and... kitchen sink type rap yeah. you know like like yeah. kind of bringing it back to the basic level of and things that people can relate to yeah yeah it's it's important and it's always going to be there in the scene mm-hmm. um but it's not always um it's not always at the forefront you know obviously you get certain songs like even with you know um stateside you have like Kanye with stuff like Jesus Walks which is like something that's completely different you know mm-hmm. to do with yeah. religions mm-hmm. something that's just like not there mm-hmm. so my question to you now is you know conscious I don't like to use it I don't like to yeah. box people but conscious versus commercial where is the balance like in terms of you in as a listener and mm-hmm. as an MC yourself where is the balance you know because maybe I'm missing a trick here but I think with with me what it is is I'm never really thinking I, I never write material with with a commercial intent with uh, I'm not really cause when I think about commercial mm. I take it in the literal sense like yeah it's commerce business sells, exactly. money yeah yeah, yeah and, yeah, and yeah. I think sometimes that can corrupt what you're doing mm. and then you're listening for trends and stuff like that whereas I'm never really I'm not really thinking about that when I'm writing I'm just yeah. in tune to my soul so yeah. really for me the things that are affecting me is what I try and write about I try and express myself as an artist so I'm not really thinking about YouTube hits sales figures or anything yeah, all yeah. these things are a blessing if you can get them and I'm not discrediting anyone like let's get go get them figures but really in terms of the artwork I'm really just conscious about my environment that's the that's the driving factor between my creativity thing so yeah I don't go in with a mindset of all right let me make a commercial track mm. I do think there's a trick to it because I think like to take a pop artist like Jamaraquai, yeah. he kind of at one point in his career he kind of had it on lock because he was very clever at talking about commercial uh, about in a commercial way he would talk yeah. about something light and yeah. bubbly yeah. he would give you a light and bubbly beat but when yeah. you listen to it you're like yo that's wow. some serious consciousness mm-hmm. he's yeah. dropping so like you take a track like Virtual Insanity which had a massive award winning video bro, yeah bro you're gonna I, have to that yeah we're reaching one. over for the high Jamiroquai. five Jamiroquai yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna spot as well yeah yeah Jamiroquai. And his hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was very socially conscious. Mm, like mm. albums like Emergency on Planet Earth and Space Cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking about his environment in a serious way. And that was kind of like a, a mentor mm. in the sense that, oh gosh, you can do, you can talk about lyricism. But as he got further along his career, he kind of mastered the craft of, I can tell you something really social in a yeah. kind of commercial way where no yeah. one even, re- everyone's jingling True. along to the, and I've got a song it's like true. I Need Money, for example, which is a really jingly, hey, upbeat sound. Mm. But actually, if you listen to the crux of the matter, it's a serious issue. It's, serious. it's about economic circumstances, yeah? But everyone's just jumping along like, I need money, like, it's yeah, all yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, there are key ways, but for me, it's always, a, the content is always driven by my circumstances, what's around me, my environment, and I'm never thinking I'm making a commercial track. Mm. Maybe I'm missing a trick here, but that's. Yeah. Just, I think I'm going to stay to that that approach to my writing, to be honest. I have to say, with some commercial tracks, though, you'll get, okay, I know there is a formula to making a selling song, but yeah. most of them, it could be like, Doom, my phone's on the table. Mm, my phone's on the table. Phone, phone. But like, and that's the Just, whole yeah, yeah. song. Yeah, we? yeah I'm like, a bit late on this one, but someone mm. come back in the car the other day and said, "Yo, I was listening to a song and said you got dry face. You need E45. You got dry face." <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Song. And yeah, it was just that. I mean, you know oh, what I'm talking nah, about? Nah, 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 go nah, check nah, for nah. that, yeah? I haven't heard it yet. I'm sure yeah. I'm, it's the big one. You need that. you got that dry face. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you gotta find it, yeah. You gotta find it. It's it's, 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 it's it's hot off the press right now. So I'm like, okay, cool, like whatever. But I'm not really about that. More no, power yeah, to those people, like go and do your thing. But I I'm I'm on a different agenda. When I start writing my things, I've got a different agenda on my mind. I'm trying to express I'm trying to express feelings that I think will connect with an audience so they can say, yeah, I've been through that. Mm. Whether it's about coming up in a single parent family, whether it's about um, deprivation, yeah. p- poverty, whether it's about feelings of anger or frustration, even that. whether it's about, you know, just wanting to take it to the top or motivational stuff, whatever it is, it's kind of based from an emotion that mm. I hope audiences can connect with. I'm not really thinking, right, hey, wouldn't this be, this is what the commercial scene yeah. needs mm. right now. And you know, if, if that blows, then that's cool with me. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so obviously, not taking away from yeah, yeah. your name, mm-hmm. but. Kingpin. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is that anything to do with Marvel Comics? Oh, standardly, man. Yeah. You know, like I do what I love. You know, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and like Kingpin, I just love that. I love that character. He was connected to the underground. Yeah, yeah. He was connected yeah. to the underground. If you, you want to get a job done, he had links with anyone and anybody, and he could make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So, and like, you know, Wilson Fisk, however you want to call it, he's making a resurgence now because yeah. the Daredevil thing's big. Yeah, yeah. And he's yeah, one yeah, of that, yeah. he's arch nemesis. So suddenly Kingpin's in the forum for everybody and everyone's discussing it. But yeah, it was kind of like my love. It comes from my love of comics. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a designated name as well because yeah. when my, uh, my crew seeing me do my I think they were like at first I just rapped under my first name and then I yeah, had a yeah. rubbish name like Quick and Vibes and it was they were rubbish <laughs> and like, my boy said you gotta come with something powerful yeah. something that will strike them and it was like Kingpin yeah, and King I thought Pin. yeah I like that I read a lot of Spider-Man mm. he was an arch nemesis so I thought that brings my love of comics mm. into you know into my world of rap and I Simple. thought yeah I'm gonna go with it and so yeah that's how it come so, about actually so right. yeah you caught me on that one Craig so I, got, I got some questions for you man yeah some, do it oh Marvel gosh Marvel I'm in trouble questions. let's go let's see let's see Marvel, Marvel trivia but no, 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 not even. But okay. we could we could talk about that yeah, all day. Yeah, yeah, you love that. Yeah, but it might go over some people's heads because okay, you know cool. they're just not deep. Like <laughs> they're that. not ready. But, but this one, this one can relate to to whatever you like. But okay. Your biggest enemy, your biggest um, nemesis. Oh, mm. my biggest nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Evil love. Uh, <laughs> my biggest nemesis. I don't know. Actually, I think. Actually, sometimes I think it's just the mundaneness of life. Mm. Yeah, because I want to be in my creative realm all the time. Yeah. yeah? And sometimes you're in the peak of your creativity and a phone bill comes through the door. Uh, It's not like I ain't got it covered. But sometimes the mundane, the normal (laughs) routines of life, sometimes that's like my nemesis because it stops me from being in my creative zone. So I think sometimes it's just the mundane factors of life that can be my my biggest nemesis Mm -hmm. because it stops me doing what I want to do. Because guess Mm. what? I'll go pick up food from the supermarket. I'm like a normal human. I eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to yeah, do anything yeah, yeah, when yeah, I just yeah. want to sit in my room and write. So it's the mundane routines of life that can be my biggest nemesis because I just want to be in my creative bubble all the time. I yeah. couldn't mm. imagine seeing you in the supermarket. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you look cool though, pushing that trolley round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to maintain trying my cool. Trying to find, trying to find those originals. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, where are they? Yeah. Trying to be a kingpin in the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. it, it don't really work, exactly. but yeah, you got to do it. Yeah. Everyone's got to yeah. do it. All right, so my biggest nemesis. Your wingman. My wingman. Ah, my wingwoman. Your wing woman. Cool, cool. Shady, man. Like, she helped me put on my launch event. Yeah. Um, she's been helping me with all my PR and everything like that. She's like, boy. Big. She is queen pin right about now. She's doing, yeah, it. She's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's doing everything yeah. for me. So she's she's yeah. the original PIC partner in crime, yeah. wing woman. You know, yeah, yeah. she's she's that for me right now. So Shout boy, we're right. She, she told me when I got, she was like, yo, you know, you gotta be on radio today. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 standard. So yeah, she's she's yeah. keeping me on lockdown. And and all this while she's got a majorly busy agenda of her own with her own massive rap career, yeah. and she manages to keep on top of my game. So yeah. man, much love for Shady. She she the wing woman. And she she the partner in crime right now, yeah. man. Side yeah, yeah. Kick, she's she's got to come back in the yeah. hot seat as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely do that, do that. So, um, um, last but not least, mm-hmm. you have one superpower. It's only active for one day. Ooh. What is it? What is it? One day. One day. Yeah. I love your sound effects, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's me really channeling my chakra to fire it back. You know what? I would like to, for one day, but I can use it as much as I want, yeah? yeah I, I would yeah. like to be able to to manipulate time so I could rewind time and I'd go to some of the baddest classical mo- moments yeah, in music. Yeah, yeah. I'd go back in time and watch Bob Gar- Bob Marley's first major gig. Mm. Go back in time and see Martin Luther King dropping mm. his I Have a Dream speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back in time. So if you give me 24 hours with a, with an ability, mm. yeah, I'll, that's what I'd be doing. I'd be just Sick. going back to pivotal moments and, and, and soaking up and absorbing that that mm. that um that vibe from it. You and could, then I probably in fact go I'll go back in time and pretend that I made up a load of hit songs and be like, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah, you know. Launch yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. or you could go forward in time and check the lottery numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the sound of that. Yeah, I like the I mean. sound of that too. Yeah, yeah and then yeah, I'll yeah. be big. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be on that. I'll be manipulating time. Yeah. That's what I'll be doing. Fair, fair, mm-hmm. fair. All right, so we're gonna get into your into your music, okay? Uh, in a moment, but tell us a little bit about um, art, art of survival, the art of survival. So, like the album, I, w- I made it through a point where I was going through a lot of turmoil. I was, I was originally, I was with my crew. The last pro- project I done, Shame the Devil, and that was like really rated. We got a lot of love from the likes of Public Enemy and all sorts. Like mm. publications were giving us a lot of love, great reviews from every source that you can imagine. It was really great, um, and then like. 
things like, you know, it's a lot of egos to try and keep him the control. And sometimes yeah. the best laid plans go to pot for one reason or the other. Yeah. And so we kind of broke up. And that's difficult because these are friends. So I kind of broke up with a, a strong relationship with them. At the same time, my dad was passing, uh, was suffering cancer and passed away. And so you can imagine all that can sometimes make a man feel like, what am I doing? Do I want to continue pursuing? But mm. I thought, nah, art. Hip hop is an art, yeah. and it's a form of expression. And if I don't, if I hold on to these emotions, mm. they can literally kill me inside. They yeah. can burn me. So why don't I express them as I've always done? I write, and write, and get this out of my soul. Yeah. So I saw hip hop as an art mm. of yeah. my survival. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 also the persistence and the continuation to keep doing what I'm saying. That in itself is, if you look at that journey, that mm. is in itself the art of survival. So yeah. it kind of works on many levels. The name art of survival. And mm. so within this album. All that anguish, all those turmoil, all those different tribulations that I've gone through are, are within that album. Hence the name, The Art of Survival. And so it's a soundscape for that journey, you know, and it's hopefully the listeners get a feeling of it. It's a reflection of, you know, being a young man growing up in the inner city environment of London. So whether you're from a rural environment or whether you're from the US, you come in you come into my world and yeah. get an appreciation of it and connect and bring your own connection to it through your own experiences as well so that's what I was about what would be like a fear for you at this stage because I guess it is really amazing that you're able to talk about your own personal experiences yeah, yeah. to such a big degree mm -hmm. but do you ever feel like oh, maybe I'm sharing too, too much? much yeah sharing yeah. too much or that it's let because you're letting people like you're letting into your heart. So you're yeah, very right. You're very right. Any any time you do, you create something like this. To be honest, you you it's like. It's, it's almost like... It's like your soul. Metaphorically, it's... you're walking out on the street naked. Like, you're putting yeah. everything yeah. out there on the line and saying, yo, check me out. And mm. you know what, though? As an artist, the longer you go through the process, you have to develop a thick skin. Because yeah. I appreciate honesty more than I appreciate falseness. Yeah, so if someone yeah, yeah, tells yeah. me straight up, T, you could have done better than that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or you could come harder than that. Or mm. this is my favourite tune. Or I'm not so keen on that tune. That, yeah. to me, is real. So, yeah. to be honest, developing that thick skin, then you've got nothing to fear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, because as long as you're proud of your work, then okay, say what you want about it. I have nothing to fear because this is me. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Mm. And you can take it or leave it, love it or hate it. But I'm proud of this and it's a true reflection of me. So because I'm being 100% real and authentic, realistically, I have absolutely no fear. But you're mm. very correct. Yeah. You are putting a lot of heart and soul and there is a lot that you're giving. So there is an element of reservation and like, no, but you've got to let go and you've got to let people have their own opinions. So I have no fear though, Sick, you know? Man. Well, we appreciate you, man, Thank stopping you. by. This is UK Full Stop, playing the greatest to the latest in UK urban culture. Thursdays, 10 p.m. to midnight on Westside Radio.